Well, now that I've finally played, finished, and reviewed the entire Metroid saga from start to finish, I'm pretty exhausted. I mean, after spending six months playing these games and capturing a grand total of two days, one hour, 27 minutes, and 53 seconds of footage for this series, I'm pretty sure you would be as well. But you know me, I don't half ass anything. So while I've been playing these games, I've been ranking them as I go along. The following leaderboard leaves rose-tinted specs at the door and is based on my experiences of playing these games in 2021 and how much I enjoyed them. I shouldn't have to point this out, but this ranking is my own opinion and does not invalidate how you feel about these games. Now, I know you guys don't agree with my list probably, so let me know yours in the comments. Are you ready? Let's do this. And number 16 is Metroid Prime Hunters First Hunt. This is propping up the rest of the leaderboard, mainly because it's a rather limited demo. It's an interesting look at what would come later on, but ultimately this is three incredibly brief minigames that bring little more than 30 minutes of enjoyment at most, and that's all I can say about that. It's only natural that the full version of Metroid Prime Hunters should follow on at number 15. Contrary to how some people feel about my prior video review, I don't hate this game or any game on this list. It's just that this is a very repetitive shooter that could have been a lot better if more time was spent on the single player and less on the multiplayer. The basics are more or less there, but it's just all in all a rather dull game. We're still on the Nintendo DS and number 14 with Metroid Prime Pinball. This unusual spin-off is a pretty good pinball game with some well-designed tables and bonus games that do a good job of conveying the themes and locations of Metroid Prime. However, this is another game that suffers from a lack of substance, unless you really love spending hours trying to beat your high scores. Metroid Prime Federation Force is up at number 13, a game that I feel delivers a much better handheld experience than Hunters did. In my review, I was able to look past the lack of Samus and the more shooter-based gameplay. However, the co-op flavoured gameplay makes this one a hard game to go back to unless you have a few friends to play with. A possibly controversial choice here, but I have placed Nintendo Land's Metroid Blast Attraction at number 12. Yes, this is the least Metroid-like game on this entire list, but it's exponentially more fun than the previous three games, whether in single player or multiplayer. It's a wonderful love letter to the series that is accessible to everyone, so it earns this place on the ranking board with pride. A possibly even more controversial choice is putting the original Metroid in at number 11. I can sense some salty comments coming my way, but I'm ranking these games based on how fun they are to play in 2021, and Samus' debut unfortunately has aged poorly and is quite a chore to play. Another reminder, I don't hate this game, it is just a victim of being three and a half decades old and is more or less redundant after Zero Mission's release. And if that pissed you off, or oh, you're going to love me placing Metroid Other M in at number 10, while the game held up better in my own memory of playing it at the time of release, my 2021 playthrough uncovered a whole heap of issues I had completely forgotten about. But even with those issues, I did find myself enjoying Other M more than I did with the original NES game. The standard gameplay mechanics are highly enjoyable, and the whole game is unfortunately marred by some puzzling gameplay and narrative decisions. Metroid 2 Return of Samus on the humble Game Boy here at number 9. Despite its limited hardware, this unique entry in the series is still highly playable, while its importance to the series narrative is still undisputed. The 3DS remake might make this game more or less redundant, but there's absolutely more than enough merit to play this game at least once. My number 8 goes to Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. While a really good sequel that adds enough additions and changes to the original, I found there was a little too much padding for my liking, and the environments too bland and unmemorable. However, I do love the new abilities added to this sequel, even if some of them aren't utilised nearly enough. Metroid Zero Mission, the GBA remake of the original Metroid game, comes up at number 7. It is a truly great remake, with gorgeous 2D visuals and a heap of quality of life improvements that really make this remaster a more palatable game overall. Admittedly, it's almost too friendly in its approach to showing you where to go next, but the newly added additional content more than makes up for it. 
Corruption, the finale of the Metroid Prime trilogy, is our number 6 entry. Many consider it to be the weaker of the three games, but I enjoyed this planet hopping adventure, engaging Wii Remote controls and the attempts to expand Metroid's world and show more of the Galactic Federation. I found this game to be a fitting end to the saga. At number 5 is Metroid Samus Returns for the Nintendo 3DS, Mercury Steam's first crack at the series. A superb remake of the Game Boy's Return of Samus, this entry made some bold changes to Metroid's mechanics, adding the controversial melee counter and changes to the original game's world design overall. But I enjoyed every second of this title and it definitely deserves its high spot here. I always thought I didn't like the Metroid Prime series as much as the 2D games until I finally sat down to replay everything this year. Metroid Prime ends up at a lofty number 4 thanks to the amazing world of Talon 4, some excellent world building and the bold move to a first person view. Those lock on mechanics still hold up incredibly well and the whole game is enjoyable from start to finish. The final three were incredibly hard to choose from but getting the bronze medal here is Metroid Fusion. The first 2D adventure after Super Metroid was always going to have a hard time, especially one designed for the handheld system. However, Fusion tries to add new elements to the series and while the heavy handed linearity does detract from the standard Metroid style of play, the gameplay here is good enough to balance that all out. If the top three was hard enough to work out, the top two was even harder. However, I've decided to give Metroid Dread second place. This is a truly exquisite entry in the series that takes the 2D Metroid mechanics to greater heights, closing the book on the series as it stands. But as I mentioned in my review, it is far too soon to tell if Dread will have the staying power of certain other entries in this series. However, there is a part of me that thinks that this Switch game has the potential to have that legendary status that my number one pick has. And of course, that number one game is Super Metroid. Now this game is at number one, not because of nostalgia, but because even in 2021, after Ridley knows how many times I've played for this game from start to finish, I am still learning new things about this Super Nintendo classic. There's a reason why this game arguably made speedrunning a thing, because there's so much depth to this title, intentional or otherwise. The way this game explains everything with a sense of subtlety through visual aids and immaculate level design makes Super Metroid as much of a classic as it ever did, and it's these qualities that pipped it to the post over Metroid Dread, but the margin was so close you would not believe it. So there you go, 16 Metroid games ranked in order of my own enjoyment. Doing this series has been a whole lot of fun and I'm glad you were all with me as part of this incredible journey through some superb games. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this massive look at a series very close to my heart. I will be back sometime in 2022 with new videos about something not related to this series, so stay tuned. <laughs>